<laughs> I'd like to call this meeting to order, 631. Please join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amendments to the agenda. Yes, members of the board would like you to consider adding uh, one item to the agenda under J, new business, nomination and confirmation of new staff. We have motion. I move that we amend the agenda by adding the following to J, new business, as recommended by the superintendent. Nomination and confirmation of new staff. I second that. Discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> Item D, approval of minutes for the November 8, 2016 meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes of November 8, 2016 board meeting as presented. I second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Minutes of the November 22nd, 2016 special board meeting. I move that we approve the minutes of the November 22nd, 2016 special board meeting as presented. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Item E, communications and correspondence. I've circulated four letters of uh, retirement slash resignation for the board's review, and I'll address them in my report. Thank you. Any other? Item F, public participation. <coughs> Item G, administrative board reports. Mr. Clifford. I'd like to start, it's not in my board report, um, but <clears throat> thanking members of the community for participating in our career day that we had on Wednesday. Um, we had 48 presenters. We all met in the cafeteria, uh, or in the cafeteria, in the um, theater with our student body, introduced everybody that was presenting that day and what they did. Um, there were a lot of EHS alumni, and that was great to see them come back. And um, like I said, 48, and they range from, you know, um, plumbers to college coaches to college athletes um, to educators and a wide variety and uh, the feedback from all the presenters were our kids were excellent and uh, they were real excited to be there and it went really well so and also kudos to um, Bev Homich and Hope High for putting that together it's a ton of uh, phone calls a lot of emails and organizing and it went very well it went really well um, the Olympia Snow Leadership Program, which I introduced to you probably is the first time that you saw when you saw my board report. And uh, we have five sophomores that are participating. Um, they had an orga organizational session that was in September, and then they had their first conference, which was last month. And uh, this is schools from all over the state. Um, the ones that were cho chosen were lucky, very lucky to to be chosen, and um, that's going to continue for three years. It's a three-year commitment, and then hopefully um, at the end of three years, we'll be chosen again. Um, but feedback from uh, Mrs. Cutney, who's the advisor, is it's gone very well, and uh, the five students have been uh, fantastic to work with. Our bar visit is tomorrow. So um, we have a lady coming from St. Louis Park in Minneapolis, and uh, she's spending the day with us. She'll sit in on, on the two freshman team meetings first thing in the morning. Then we'll have a risk review meeting that she'll sit in on. And then she'll go to a classroom and watch an eye time. And then she's meeting individually with teachers. And pretty much just to get some feedback on how it's going. And um, she'll give us feedback on the meetings and um, what we can do differently. And uh, look at the Google Doc that we're using. And um, just give us information on that. So I'm really looking forward to her feedback. And then um, she'll do a follow-up, either her or somebody else from St. Louis Park in the spring. Yeah. Um, could you just for the viewing audience, Mr. Clifford, uh, give a 
quick overview of what BAR is? Sure. Uh, billing asset, reducing risks, and that's the federal grant that our freshman team received. Um, so it's a, for our freshman academy. Thank you. Yep. In Chicago, I know a lot of you were there um, over the last week and a half, and uh, it was a terrific show. Kids did a great job. Um, pretty much every single night, the attendance was, was very good. And um, as you see, we had a ton of kids involved. So um, very, very successful production. And our Holiday Arts Festival is this Thursday. And from 5.30 to 7 is the art show. And then at 7 o'clock to 8.30 is the holiday concert. So hopefully you're free that night and, and we'll see you there. Any questions or comments? I just want to say I attended two performances of Chicago. I was really very impressed by the um, the performances of the students and the costumes and the mm. sets and just the overall production was amazing. Yeah. So. A lot of talented kids. I, and I and I I've been talking it up. So I saw it the first weekend and then I, I was telling everyone I could and I some people came the second weekend who had no connection to the Ellsworth schools. Mm -hmm. They just decided they they heard about it from lots of other people too that was really good and they and they went and they were like, Wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. What a what, a, what good entertainment to have, you know, here yeah. in Hancock County. It's like, you know, they, so kudos to the whole, uh, everyone involved with that. Yeah. They did a great job. Good. Mr. Newitt. Sure, you know, from the middle school, when I saw the show, too, and the, I got to mention the pit was really good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, too, yeah. At Ellsworth Middle School, today was report card day. It was supposed to be yesterday. We got snowed out, so today the report cards went home. This is the first time we have gone standards-based grading with all of our unified arts subjects, so that's four <coughs> different subjects where kids will get a one through four grade as opposed to a zero to 100 grade. Um, so we'll, look, we'll be looking for feedback on that from parents. And it was the first time also that we put our habits of work grade on the report card as well, so parents will get a view as to, uh, you know, their collaborative worker, quality worker, and responsible citizen categories and a rating of one to four in those categories. We also sent home the rubric with the kids so parents can use that as a guide. Last week was pretty cool. We had four Apple consultants meet with our seventh and eighth grade students on two different days to do a MLTI boot camp. And our kids rotated through four different stations uh, to learn uh, various applications from, from movies to, um, I, I won't be able to think of the four things, but uh, you know the kids I talked to really enjoyed it. Oh, gaming, I should remember that, because okay. they could programming, some program called Scratch, I think it's called. And, uh, but it was well received by the students and the staff. Our winter concert is tomorrow night at 6.30, beginner band, concert band, and chorus will be performing. Um, today was day one of auditions for our annual talent show. We always do that the Friday before Christmas break. And uh, it's so, for me, it's fun because kids that I just see and they don't say boo, all of a sudden you give them a microphone and they can sing. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So we look forward to that show. In co curricular news, um, we also had a drama production. Our fall play was Susical uh, Junior, and uh, that went off very, very well. Uh, Talk about a nice collaboration between the high school and middle school. The set, or the backdrop, I should say, was painted by a high school uh, student, which was wonderful. And then the show that Jasmine Ireland directed uh, was a lot of fun for the kids. And we even ran that on a Saturday matinee uh, after two shows on a uh, Thursday and Friday. And uh, it was nice to see the turnout for that. Auditions are tomorrow for show choir. That starts right up. Charlie Brown is the show, and we'll see how that plays out, literally. Um, winter sports season is underway. We have four ball teams, two cheerleader teams, 82 kids are involved, so it's a lot of good involvement there. And the chess team uh, met last week for the first time in a, in a meet. They've been practicing for a couple weeks, and we have 17, excuse me, 27 students on our chess team. So it's fun to fill the fill the cafeteria. We always schedule it during ball game days because the cheerleaders don't need the cafeteria for practice. So when we have ball teams going, chess team going, it's, it's a busy place. <coughs> and in parent news, I'd just like to thank all those parents who came out and walked in the parade. For the younger kids that walked, uh, they ne do need their parents because I sure don't want to hurt them myself. And um, to have the parents there assisting and singing 
uh, was great and credit to Francis Kellogg, our elementary music teacher who, who coordinated uh, a gentleman to rig up a stereo system in the back of his car so it was blasting the uh, Christmas songs as we sang them. It was just a lot of fun. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Good evening, everybody. Amy Peterson Roper. Um, so I have quite a bit of school news to talk about tonight. The first one is that Ellsworth Elementary Middle School was invited to, from the Maine Department of Education to be part of a literacy pilot. It's a K-3 literacy pilot that is, um, comes with iPads and an instructional coach. Um, the purpose of it is to increase literacy achievement in students and we, we know that that's the most important thing that we can be doing right now is really talking to kids about how uh, not only to um, read but also how to integrate what they're reading into everything else that they're doing. Um, it comes with a, a literacy coach that will come into our school three to six times. We're a pretty large school. We're the largest school that they've chosen, so I think we'll have the literacy coach the most. Um, and we're very excited for this opportunity. So we are building a, K, uh, a K3 literacy leadership team, and uh, we're hoping that the devices will be in the teacher's hands before the holidays and we will be putting them in children's hands. So in kindergarten and first grade, every child will have an iPad. And in second and third grade, they'll be sharing iPads. And we're hoping by the end of January that will be happening. And by the end of March, we will have a suite of apps that have been vetted um, that really have to do with uh, good teaching. So we're very excited about it. We had our perfect attendance for the first trimester. We know it's really difficult. Kids get sick, and so we do this three times. So if you don't get the first trimester, you can get the second or the third. Um, we had 75 students who had perfect attendance for the first trimester, and they all got a little green bracelet uh, at the assembly. We also had our vacation reading challenge, and we had 44% of our kids um, who read over the November break. Another one's coming up in December, and I've been going into classrooms when, um, well, one of the things they get to do is they got the principal pick. And so every classroom who, who um, all the children in each classroom who participated, their names went into a basket, one was drawn, and they came down to me, and they chose the book that I was going to read for this month. And so as I've been going into classrooms and reading, we've been talking about it's okay if you didn't do it this month, you can do it in December. And three is better than none, and two Two is better than none and one is better than none because at the end all their names are going into a girl basket and a boy basket at each grade level and they are going to get a new bike so whoever's name is is chosen out of that and we would like to thank the Ellsworth Masons um, I don't know if I say it right Lagonia Lagonia um, Lodge for uh, number 40 for helping to support this book for bikes and it's pretty exciting and the kids are excited about it so um, vacation reading challenge is coming up and we really want to hit that over that 50% so all you have to do is read six days out of the nine and uh, you get it. Uh, our progress reports as Jim has just um, mentioned uh, they're called report cards at the middle level but we call them progress reports at the elementary level and uh, they came home all of the benchmarks that are listed on that report card are the end of the year benchmarks some of them have not been assessed yet, so it has NYA. Do not be um, upset if you see a lot of NYAs. It's just the first trimester. And if you see twos, it means that they're developing. And there's plenty of opportunities for them to retake that assessment for the end of the school year. Um, everything at the K-4 level is standard space at this point, and we're pretty excited about it. And the kids are doing a great job, as are the teachers. And last on school news, we were also um, the Cole Museum. Every year, we've been participating in bringing children to the Cole's Transportation Museum, uh, particularly fourth grade, and seventh grade goes as well. And um, we've gotten throughout the course of the last few years things like a smart board or um, projectors for, or what do you call those? Um, the things that, what is it? Dot cameras, and um, this year they are offering us 25 to 50 Kindle Fires to be put in our library, and it comes with an upload of up to 25 books each. And so we're pretty excited about that, and we think that that just goes right along with our um, sort of integrating literacy and technology. 
For PTF News, we had our annual Hands Across Ellsworth. It was our 10th annual. We had K through 5 children passing food. There were pictures in the Ellsworth American. I think we had 450 pounds of food, um, and that was really exciting. And it's always just so nice for kids to be participating in thinking about their community. Um, we had our movie night on Friday night. There were a lot of children. I'd like to thank Tim McCleskey for stepping in for me. I was not able to be there, but uh, it was a great time. And the PTF um, sold pizza and other baked goods, and they made $500, which is going to our fencing that um, Dave Norwood is doing. And last, we have our holiday gifting, which is on <coughs> December 22nd. Um, this will be the third annual time that we do that. It's a time where children, we've gotten donations from parents, but mostly from teachers and staff members. And uh, kids can go around and pick a gift for their brother or sister or mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whoever. They get to choose one, and then they get to bring it in and have it wrapped. And so um, that's going to be happening on the 22nd. And if you would like to come, come on and volunteer and help do it. You'll see a lot of smiles. Any questions? Yes, when would you like all your donations of items? Uh, Any time. I, as they come in, I am sorting them. And okay. so the conference room has every box. And um, any time, I'd love to have them. OK. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thanks. Good evening. Amy Bowles, Hancock County Technical Center. Um, the first part of my report is HCTC Gives Back. I listed for you some of the um, activities some of our different programs have been involved in um, this month or is upcoming. Um, we had a lot of our um, National Technical Honor Society students volunteer at the Points at a Ball this past weekend, helping with setting up, working the event, and then tearing down the next day. Our early childhood education students are really excited to attend a multi-generational party at the Moore Center. This is the first time we're going to do this. Um, Friends in Action ha are bringing together seniors from their group, and some of the preschool students from the Y will be coming, and then our early childhood students and all three generations will be coming together um, to do holiday activities and decorate gingerbread cookies that our culinary students will make. Our annual holiday buffet that I hope you'll all attend is Wednesday, December 21st from 11.30 to 1.30. We already have a ton of reservations. Um, if you're interested in attending with a group larger than four, I highly recommend you call Liz tomorrow <laughs> and make your reservation. Um, the following day, we've done this the last several years, the kindergarten students from EEMS will be coming up. Um, we'll take half of the classrooms in the morning and half of the classrooms in the afternoon. I give them a tour of the building and talk about jobs, basically, with them in each of the programs. And then they go into the cafeteria and decorate gingerbread cookies. As always, the kindergartners will be decorating our holiday buffet with making personalized placemats for people to enjoy while they eat, and we'll have hung gingerbread all around the cafeteria. Finally, Multimedia Technology Program has been asked by the Ellsworth Fire Department to help them create a educational video for five to 10 minutes, kind of outlining the life of a firefighter and what the job looks like. Um, so they'll be spending time interviewing members of the fire department and taking photographs over the course of this year to help them make a promotional video. They're hoping to have that done by May. On Friday, November 18th, we had um, over 50 students attend the ABC Craft Championships. This is an event that takes place every year in Augusta where major corporations, construction companies, welders, businesses bring in equipment, um, simulators, and it's a job fair at the same time, and kids get to mingle and go around. Um, Heather Pelletier, my student services coordinator, attended the craft championship breakfast beforehand, which is typically for policymakers, legislators, and CTE administrators. Um, she went this year and Little did we know that Brian Langley was being honored at the event um, for his dedication to career technical education, and we posted that picture on Facebook. Um, at our November HCTC advisory meeting, um, we've been talking for a couple of months about a possible new program at HCTC that will be housed at MDI High School, and that is a marine service technology program. Um, and at our advisory meeting, our board voted unanimously to approve um, that. 
And last evening, I went to MDI High School to present the program and HCTC. They had me do kind of an overview of what HCTC is. I gave them a breakdown of towns that their students are from. Um, it's the first time they've ever had me, so it was actually a really good thing. They have 21 members on their board, <laughs> um, so it was very different. And I did a presentation about HCTC and at the end presented the idea of the new program. Um, and it was unanimously approved by MDI High School. So our hope is that we would start this program in the fall um, and students from all of our high schools would access the Marine Service Technology Program at MDI High School. Tonight, as we speak, we have two Student of the Months being honored at the Rotary Dinner. Um, as you know, every other month they honor two Students of the Month for CTE. And this year we're honoring Hunter Eaton from Dear Al Stonington High School who is in our country, uh, carpentry program and Ethan Kane from Ellsworth High School is being honored as the Welding Technology Student of the Month. Um, so they're currently at that presentation. Finally, not included in my report, I don't know why I left it out, um, but last week my new biomedical instructor, Sarah Petrullis, and I did a presentation to the Economic Development Corps. A couple of few of you were in attendance. Um, I thought that went very well. Uh, business leaders from around um, the Greater Ellsworth community as well as City Council members, uh, Tammy Moat from Finance and then Mr. Higgins attended as well and we did an overview and talk a little bit about HCTC as well as the biomedical program, uh, what's going well, what some shortcomings are, what we need to move it forward um, and I thought it was a really productive um, evening and conversation. Any questions? I was um, fortunate enough to attend that um, last item that you talked about and um, as a guest along with Brenda and um, Mr. Higgins and the, the feedback I heard afterwards from a bunch of people on that board was very positive and Good. they were very impressed with everything that's going on there and I think a lot of them didn't really know what's you know what HCTC is doing. And, I know uh, which still amazes me. Yeah well but it was you know <laughs> it's, a, it's a story that needs to be told um, and um, you know so but that, that was that was a good place uh, to tell the story and uh, yeah. thank you for, for doing so. Well, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, I'm Annie Sargent and I'm the director of the adult ed program. And do you guys have in front of you the report because there, there's this piece that I think it's important would be important for you to see, and I have multiple copies, but and I'll hand it out if that would be helpful. So our spring programs are in place for um, so that's very exciting um, Marilyn Starling and I are right in the midst of putting together our catalog um, and we have our ongoing popular courses and also a sampling of new classes including um, woodlot management writing an effective press release one of them is called so you think you might want to be an entrepreneur um, we have an art history class two sessions of it um, making a YouTube video improv theater and then our office skills model office program so we have and we also have a um, a new collaboration with an with a uh, an organization out of Brunswick called um, the Academy of Medical Professions so that we'll be able to offer through video conferencing some um, medical courses because they're in demand and hard to put together so we're excited to experiment with that I did a lot of research um, with colleagues around the state with the program and and it it doesn't cost us anything we earn money for students who take the classes at our site and we earn money for people who heard about it through our site um, and so I figured it was not an ideal way of learning for all students but it might fit the bill for some folks so that's exciting we have a lot of requests for daytime enrichment classes and we're limited um, in terms of space and so 
Um, I'm kind of a, those of you who know me know that I'm a little bit of a build it and they will come person. Mm -hmm. And um, I've decided to put the brakes on that a little bit and, and really this spring build some capacity for um, sites within the community um, so that we can um, be a little bit more planful about those classes. So um, we're excited about that. And if anybody knows of any sites within the community, um, it would be great to hear about those. We're really reaching out now. The first couple of years, I was really focused as was your, um, you wanted me to focus on the academic program and now I'm starting to turn my attention to our workforce training and enrichment program. And so we've been starting to reach out to get more ideas um, and we're doing that in a variety of ways. But I have um, posted a survey on Facebook and um, on our website and have distributed it to some folks. In fact, we sent it out to all of the staff of Ellsworth School Department and have gotten some of our ideas of classes that are happening this spring from that. So one of the things I love about adult education is that we can be very responsive. Um, it's very fun. We're also um, going to be going to scale with enrichment course evaluations um, starting this spring. We've been piloting it over the last year. And what you have as the attachment is um, using Google Forms. Are you impressed, April? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, we have, we're using that to do our enrichment um, course evaluations. And the, um, what you have here is not a lot of numbers. There are only 24 people who have submitted this so far. But I thought it was nice for you to see, you know, get a ballpark idea of the kind of statistics that we have. So. A little more than half of the people um, are taking an adult ed class for the first time. Um, this course met everybody's expectations. This, I, I, I literally cut and pasted this. I, that was the one issue with the Google form that I had trouble with. But um, so one of the options on this, did this court meet, meet your expectation was it did not meet it. And that wasn't the case for any of the classes, which is pretty impressive. Um, and 100% of the people would take the class take another class from that instructor. Um, I was really curious, what's the most convenient time for classes? And that's sort of all, a little bit all over the place. Um, and then again, how did you find out about the course? Pe people are still using the paper catalog. It's a big investment. I think it's a good way to promote what we do. Um, but I wanted to make sure that it was a good way to get the word out. And on the second page, again, I cut and pasted, and apparently I didn't do so well in kindergarten because they are, it's not very straight. Um, <laughs> but um, you can see here the, the kind of information that we can get. Um, and I would say that there are, it was just a couple of one course, actually, that people were, said was fair and all the rest were positive. So I was pretty excited about that. But again, I'm mostly showing that to you so that you can see what kind of data we can gather. So we're looking forward to doing that. We have a plan to do it online for people who can, and then we'll, we, have a, we have a system that we're experimenting with to do some paper ones as well. So as much as anything, it's a really great way to um, get uh, new ideas for courses as well. So we're excited about that. And then we're really, I've talked about the office skills program many times. I just, one more plug, we're actually going to try to really start um, March 1st, a model office. So we're really looking for businesses right within downtown Ellsworth, businesses and employers who might have some real activities that our office skills students could do so that they have the self-efficacy experience of actually making a difference. So if anybody knows of anybody who might be interested in that, I'd love to hear from them. The only other thing I wanted to say is our course catalog will be on our website um, by hopefully before Christmas. Um, otherwise, I'll be working on it over Christmas vacation. <laughs> um, and then it, our plan is to get it to hit the streets the first week of January. Um, we like to get it out after the new year so it doesn't get lost and bustle of the holidays. So we should be out the end of the first week in January. That's, this was a real focus on enrichment, which we haven't done much. So I hope it's helpful. Any questions?
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening. I'm Rachel Corman Ramos. I'm the curriculum coordinator. Um, our updates start with our um, recently passed November professional development days. On November 21st and 22nd, we held our um, professional development days for teachers and ed techs. We hosted Anita McCafferty and Jeff Beaudry from the University of Southern Maine for both days. They worked with teachers on assessment for learning. Um, they shared strategies and rubric development with teachers in our efforts towards implementing proficiency-based instruction. They provided numerous examples of scaffolds and graphic organizers in a hallway gallery walk. You could walk down the halls in several different directions and they brought um, many different kinds of examples for teachers to um, replicate and take pictures of and um, to you know, get ideas for personalizing on their own. Um, and how to help students have ownership of their learning and understand the uh, building blocks, the skills and concepts they're working on. The art and music teachers participated in the Main Arts Leadership Initiative, which was hosted this year by the Ellsworth High School on one of the days. And then they joined the Assessment for Learning program on Tuesday. And also our physical education teachers had um, a unique opportunity to work with Owen Cassidy, who is an outdoor guide and physical education instructor from uh, Camp Beach Cliff during day one as well. Um, the special education department, Lynn Maddox, provided two very well received days. We sent out surveys and they were very appreciated um, of personalized training for all the special ed, ed techs on the effective implementation of IEPs or individualized educational plans. Um, I personally was able to talk to some of the ed techs since then, and they so appreciated um, being able to have uh, training that was developed just for them on the kinds of uh, situations that they come across. Often in the past, they've been included in um, training for teachers, and some of it applies and some of it doesn't, depending on where they are. And um, just talking to them anecdotally, they were really pleased to have something that was so focused on them. Um, Lynn created a really wonderful program, and they were very pleased. Um, and on our post-program surveys, the teachers as well reported they were happy to have time to receive tailored professional development to their needs, and they also were given time to work and collaborate together and think about what they were learning and, and come up with ideas for next steps in the classroom. Um, I'm really pleased that we have um, three new opportunities in our schools due to some um, unexpected grant money um, with Title I. And so for the remainder of the year, I'm really pleased to welcome Candace Bray, a reading consultant with a career of experience working with students and teachers to our regular ed education side, the middle school, to support teachers over the coming months. Um, she and I will be meeting with ELA teachers in the coming week to talk with them about their challenges, their victories in teaching reading so that she can support them with resources and her time in providing students with the tools they need to be successful readers and writers. Ms. Bray has been working with the special education teachers and Lynn Maddox during the beginning of this year, and now we'll be able to support the regular education program as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to this is because this will combine with the K3 literacy project that we'll now be a part of. So we're going to have um, a, a, a heightened amount of instructional coaching throughout grades K through eight in literacy. And I think the two different programs will be able to complement each other and really offer our teachers a lot of support. Um, so I think that's gonna be very successful. Um, also tomorrow, we'll be advertising in um, servingschools.com and, and internally um, to hire a math interventionist for the remainder of the years for grades K through eight. Um, we're able to provide this service to students um, who our data shows could benefit from extra math support with the hope that uh, perhaps in the future other funding um, will make this permanent. Um, interested applicants can find the job description probably tomorrow afternoon and the contact information on servingschools.com. And finally, um, we're going to be able to introduce um, an instructional coaching model for the middle school starting um, in January. And you'll hear some more about that from Mr. Higgins' report. Um, very excited because um, we were able to um, advertise and interview a candidate who will be able to work with our middle school teachers and again uh, talk to them about what their challenges are and offer them support in differentiation, in helping um, give tiered instruction to children who have different needs 
um, in the classroom and be able to help them align their assessments so that they can begin to move more even closer to proficiency based instruction and helping children work on the standards and combined with the assessment training that we just received really be able to have students when you walk in the room have them know exactly where they are what they're working towards and the skills that they need to move forward any questions I do. Rachel can you talk a little more about what coaching looks like do they do coaches come into the classroom and observe and then after class give feedback is this something where teachers spend days out of the classroom and work with coaches so in the K3 literally but liter literacy pilot um, the instructional coach as Amy said um, will be coming to our school I think four to six times over the course of the rest of the year and um, a, as you said, um, be able to come and speak with us as administrators and speak with the teachers about the needs and the challenges and then be able to push into the classroom and work with them there. So there will be almost no time out of the classroom for the teachers, which is one of the things I like most about this model is that they won't be leaving the kids to learn something in kind of an alternate environment and then try to figure out how to make it work in their real life setting. These are coaches who will be coming into the classroom, maybe they'll model a lesson or model an idea or they'll, um, um, you know teach side by side for a few minutes and give them some ideas get to see what kind of students they're working with and the challenges and the needs that the kids have so it'll be real time you know real place instruction and we'll be having the same model in the upper grades as well so we're really working towards um, models of instructional coaching where the students where the teachers are not leaving we want the kids with their teachers as much as possible um, often when um, coaches who don't know a school district very well will come in and say this is a great model you should try this and the teachers first reaction might be you don't know the students I have we have students who go to band in the middle or we have students who have these needs or you don't know and so this won't work just like that it's not a cookie cutter thing and so what we really want to do is have models where the coach would be able to come in and observe and see what the challenges are and see where the strengths are which kids are leaders which kids they can leverage to work with other students that kind of thing and also one of the other pieces about the instructional coaching model is that we are going to be able to provide um, substitutes for maybe 15 to 20 minutes where a teacher could go see an, another teacher who has a strength in a particular challenge they're having Maybe they have a challenge in um, you know, management of multiple different groups working at different things. And the coach has been able to observe another teacher who's very good at that particular aspect of working in the classroom. So the teachers could watch each other in real time and bring that back to their classroom. But we are, our goal in this coaching is to really minimize the amount of time that the teachers are out of the classroom. Great, thank you. Any other That's questions? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Report. It's my turn. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first and foremost, we'd like to welcome new and returning school board members. Um, and I'd like to introduce, um, first and foremost, um, returning member, Marsha Jude, who finished a three-year term and uh, was reappointed by the remaining board members to fill a one-year vacancy. So welcome back, Marsha. Thank you. I uh, would like to welcome Joanne Avery, um, even though this is your second meeting uh, Joanne, uh, welcome publicly. Thank uh, Joanne is a former uh, longtime teacher at Ellsworth High School and is joining the board and was elected this past fall. So congratulations and welcome. Thank you. And uh, Ellsworth uh, School Department does have a student representative and that will be senior Hayden Sattler. And unfortunately Hayden is not able to attend this evening as he's uh, off competing with the high school swim team. Uh, but welcome to all of you and um, look forward to working with you. Uh, next item on my agenda is something that's not on the printed copy that you received, but I would like to echo what Mr. Clifford said uh, with regard to our uh, student behavior at the uh, job fair. And Mr. Clifford reported that uh, many of the presenters uh, commented on how well behaved our students were. Uh, I also had an opportunity to speak with Mrs. Sveck about her recent trip to Quebec with her students, and some of the feedback that she received was very much the same, that Ellsworth High School students are very well behaved. Um, when they're out in public. So not only do we have our students representing our school and community very well with our local business population, but also internationally. So I think it speaks well for our students and what's going on in our schools. Um, another item that's not quite as exciting, but uh, very important, we'll talk a little bit about water testing results. I know many of you are uh, familiar with what happened a couple of years ago in Flint, Michigan with lead in water um, and how some other schools in Maine voluntarily tested their water and found there to be a uh, presence of lead in their water. 
Well, Ellsworth School Department was being proactive as well and opted to uh, work with Public Works Director Larry Wilson and Water Department staff member Peter Austin um, to take a look at what Ellsworth schools have for infrastructure and determine um, that we should do a voluntary test of our drinking water in the Ellsworth schools as well. Now, it's important for members of the board, members of the audience, and members of the public to know that school systems who have a water source that is from a municipal water source like Ellsworth are not required to test like schools that are on wells. However, given what's happened in other communities, given what's happened nationally, we opted to uh, conduct tests voluntarily. So over the past uh, month, we have uh, had water sources for all of our sources that are used for consumption, water fountains, and in food preparation tested by the main C CDC Health and Environmental Testing Lab. And the results of the testing were that our water is satisfactory for consumption and well below uh, the limits of lead in the water. Uh, we were confident that that was going to be the outcome because in two of our schools, all of the fixtures were lead-free fixtures. The one school that we had a little bit of a concern about was HCTC, uh, and even that HCTC with older fixtures, um, the levels there were, again, well below maximum contaminant level. Uh, so for citizens out there, the water in those schools is safe to drink, and uh, we'll be working with Mr. Wilson uh, to talk about how frequently that we want to test. Even though we're not required to, even though our voluntary test proved um, to support what we believed, um, I believe that the Department of Education is going to be mandating water testing even in systems like ours, so we're going to be ahead of the curve on that as well. Uh, Mother Nature did not cooperate for my next item. Uh, the desire was to have no school cancellations prior to tonight's meeting so that we could remind parents about how they can learn about school uh, closures. Uh, but even though M Mother Nature didn't cooperate, we can still remind parents. Our notification system primarily is going to be through Infinite Campus, and that will be through uh, communicated closures with phone, email, or text. And if parents did not get a notification for this most recent storm, we asked them to contact the school and update their contact information. We will also use the traditional means of notifying families of closures um, using television stations WLBZ and WABI, radio stations WNSX Star 97.7 FM, WZON uh, 62 AM, and Town Square media stations, which are Q106.5, 107.3, 95.7 and AM 1370 WDEA. As many of you have read in the newspaper, the uh, first regular session of the 128th Maine Legislature convened on December 7th, 2016. While cloture is not expected to be until December 30th, 2016, and a, a listing of education-related bills has not been made available. However, it is expected there will be proposed bills around regional and cooperative programming and efficiency initiatives, which is something I know those of you who attended the fall conference talked about in a regional meeting. Um, school choice, once again. Amendments to the educational surtax uh, referendum that was passed in the recent election. And of course, uh, funding for general purpose aid to education. Um, with regard to one of those items, I would like to report to the board that um, Hancock County superintendents are already engaged in discussions about some potential cooperative efforts uh, that may take place over the next couple of years and as we move forward with fleshing those out we'll be coming back to our individual boards and perhaps uh, collective boards to talk about some of those. The other piece that's going to happen in the legislative session will be discussion of the ongoing transition from what used to be known as No Child Left Behind to Every Student Succeeds and I will be providing updates to members of the board and the public on um, progress of these bills as they become available for review and discussion. Um, we have a number of new staff and transferring staff I'd like to report on. First of all, Keith Wheaton, who was a custodian at EHS, has transferred to become a bus driver. Uh, Vicki Clausen is a new custodian at Ellsworth High School. Max Grover is serving as an assistant swim coach at EHS. And Aaron Pinckney is a new freshman boys basketball coach at EHS. And uh, we have a number of letters of resignation and slash retirement this evening to report to you. First of all, we have, and this has been publicized in the media, Rick Roberts, who's been involved in the high school softball program for 18 years, uh, is retiring from coaching at the school, but he's going to continue to teach students how to pitch, something that's a passion of his. Lori Madela, who has been teaching for 26 years in grade 7 at the EMS, will be retiring at the end of this year. Chuck Brooks, custodian of the EMS, who's been there, he's put 42 plus years, and will be retiring in September. And Laura Rudolph, uh, I don't think any of us thought she would ever retire, but Laura Rudolph will be retiring at the end of this school year as well. Uh, these people have uh, contributed many years of great service to the students and uh, the schools in the city, and uh, we appreciate their uh, effort. And we still have a couple of vacancies. Uh, 
a special education position at EMS, and I spoke with Mr. Clifford again earlier today. We still have a mathematics position uh, open at the high school, unless you found somebody earlier today, Mr. Clifford. I have Nobody today. Okay. And that concludes my report, unless you have any questions. Um, with regard to water testing, yes. is there, I understand this is voluntary. Yes. Um, is there a plan to do this on a regular schedule, or? That's what we're working on with, uh, with Larry Wilson. You know, Larry used to be the, the superintendent of the water department before he became public works director. Uh -huh. And uh, we're, we're discussing what would be an appropriate proposal to bring forth to the board. Um, from my perspective, I'm thinking um, at the very least on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. uh, the tests uh, are a small investment, but certainly to ensure that your water is, is safe for consumption, um, it's well worth the investment. Okay. Uh, but we're, we're still fleshing that out. But I did want to report the uh, results of the lead this evening, so I thought that was very important. Mm -hmm. I, I, with regard to yesterday's uh, school closure, I don't think anyone would. I know there's a lot of second guessing that goes <laughs> into this, and uh, uh, Jack Turcott wrote a, an essay that was published many, many years mm -hmm. ago about about that. You, get, you can get second guessed either way, but I don't think anyone second guessed uh, the decision yesterday to close the schools given the, the weather conditions that ended up. Um, prevailing throughout the day. So. Thank you. I have to say it was probably one of the easier decisions yep. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was very happy when my phone dinged at 530. Yeah, and in regards to the announcements, too, um, if you sign up to get notification, um, I was up, and uh, first I got uh, my phone buzzed because I got an email about it. And then within seconds, my home, my landline at my home was ringing. And within seconds after that, I got another note. I got a text message on my cell phone. So all within like a 60 second period so it's it's very effective very you know just if you if you choose to be notified you can very easily get notified promptly and effectively so yeah it's a good system thank you item h committee reports I have my old business. There's none. Okay, no one. Okay. And Jay, new business. Ms. Well, we, we, once again, as, as, as we did last month, the presentation that we were trying to line up for this month uh, did not materialize, so we will go back to the drawing board. We do have a number of presentations that involve um, school department staff and students that we will bring forth starting in January. Um, so I apologize for that, but um, this time of year sometimes it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, School Board Reorganizational Meeting. Nominations for Board Chair. I'd like to nominate Brenda Thomas to be the Board Chair. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask this question. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none. Any discussion? <laughs> well, 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 well you, you have the nomination. The next step okay. would be, and, and, oh, and actually, since, since you're the nominee, I probably should do it. Yeah, Mrs. Thomas. So, um, is there a motion uh, to approve the election of Brenda Thomas as board chair? I make a motion to approve the election of Brenda Thomas as board chair for 2016-17. I second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would entertain a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain. <laughs> okay. Now we'll turn the meeting back over oh, to you, Mrs. Thomas. You. <laughs> Nominations for board vice chair. I nominate Paul Marcosian for board vice chair. I'll second that. Is that Marcia? Yeah. Any further nominations? Do I have a motion? Can I make a motion? Yes, you do. Okay. I make a motion to approve um, the election of Paul Marcosian as board vice chair for the 2016-17 school year. I'll second it. Discussion? All those in favor? Uh, all those abstaining? Uh, consideration of overnight out-of-state trip. Oh I believe that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'd like one, please. Thank you. I'll take one, I'll take one too, Lynn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> you didn't get a copy? None of you got it. None of us got oh. I've read this. We got okay. it. I think we got it on here. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Hi, I'm Lindsay Corson. I'm one of the one and a half Spanish teachers at Ellsworth High School. Um, my 10th year doing this, and I'm still nervous um, to present. Um, so my proposal um, is basically the same. Um, I, I'd like to take the kids to Boston, get a little flamenco dancing, um, some Spanish tapas, a little Quincy Market. Um, so um, basically, every year I take them for the weekend, um, and I'll go over the itinerary in a, in a minute, but um, basically the kids come home and they say that the, the best thing that they've learned is um, how to use the public transportation system <laughs> in Boston <laughs> um, and how to um, put up with other people that use the public transportation system in Boston. Um, the price went up this year because in the in the, the past few years we haven't been able to see a show and there is not a flamenco show um, that weekend either. So I'm going to try to take them to the Blue Man Group. I took them in 2010 to the Blue Man Group. We had a blast. Um, so I'm going to try to take them to the Friday 7 p.m. show um, because it's it's um, early enough so that we can get back um, to the hotel before the the riff raff comes out late at night. Um, so the price is $325. Um, it includes everything except for subway fare, three lunches, dinner on Friday night, and any shopping that they want to do. Um, as far as fundraising, we still have lanyards um, from five years ago. We have about 10 <laughs> left. Um, we're selling them for $5 a piece. Anybody wants a lanyard? <laughs> um, we had a bake sale on 1018 at one of the soccer games. We raised $186 in like an hour and a half. It was great. The kids had fun. We're in the middle of our jam basket raffle from the Bar Harbor Jam Company. Um, the owner's my husband, so he owes me some favors. So he <laughs> donated, <laughs> donated a basket. So the kids are selling raffle tickets for that. Um, also, the Monday night basketball game, Mr. Frost is letting us do the 50-50 raffle for that. So we'll be doing We'll be doing that. Um, I, I will. S the the first sixteen students to bring in their full permission packet and the twenty five dollar deposit get to go. It was twenty students, and I brought it down to sixteen because I had all twenty go last year, um, and it was great. They were well behaved. They were wonderful. Um, but at at night, trying to get all twenty kids on the 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 T, particularly the green line. Made me a little nervous, so I, I cut it down to 16 kids um, to make it more manageable um, to smush them all like sardines on that green line for two stops until we can get on the blue line. Um, preparedness of students. I, um, I, I talk about flamenco in all my classes, um, and we'll do some preparation in Spanish club um, and evaluations, and all teachers at EHS will be chaperoning the trip. Um, if you turn to the next page, it's the itinerary. Um, we stayed at the Embassy Suites, and they actually notified me <laughs> last week. They, they, they emailed me. The woman who we usually go with emailed me, and she's like, are you guys coming? This is kind of late. I need to reserve rooms. So if you guys approve this trip, I, I have a fax ready to go and sign. i got to send it out first thing in the morning to, to reserve the rooms. Um, dinner and shopping at the Galleria Mall on Friday night. Before the Blue Man Group, I usually say to the kids, if you want to eat at the Cheesecake Factory, meet me there at 4 o'clock for an early dinner. And by 3.58, they're all there and picking out what cheesecake they want to eat. So it's not required, um, but they usually all end up there. Um, some of them have more than one piece of cheesecake. Um, and then in the morning um, of Saturday, March 11th, is when we do our flamenco dance workshop with Ramon de los Reyes. Um, and that's where they would wear their Spanish club shirt, and I'm hoping we can get that 10 to 11.30 time slot because it really is perfect because then we can go to Quincy Market for some lunch and then back to the hotel to dress up and then dinner at Tosca, which is a tapas restaurant. It's delicious. They feed us until we're literally bent over walking out of the, walking out of the restaurant, and it's, it's, it's really reasonable what they give us for food. 
and we had a vegetarian last year and they made sure she didn't eat any you know they made sure to make her something special we had a shellfish allergy mrs cutney <laughs> shellfish allergy and they, we, they made sure to um, keep the shrimp away from her and give her a special dish um they would miss school friday um to travel to travel down there i i really like to take the 7 a.m um concord trailways bus because you're guaranteed to fit a big group on that bus mm -hmm. and last year i bought the tickets in advance and it worked out great they knew we were coming they had tickets it was wonderful um and on the last page are are some pictures of last year the the top picture if that was my first picture with a selfie stick they teased me um Ramon, our flamenco um, instructor, is in the upper left-hand corner. A little old man. He's so sweet. Um, and that's the kids having fun with their castanets. He takes the time to make sure they all have castanets um, to teach them how to do that. Um, the second to last picture, Mr. Frost was in Boston and tried to avoid us but couldn't. So he, um, <laughs> <laughs> we were going inbound and he was going outbound and he, he snapped that picture. They were, Mr. Frost, Mr. Frost, and he snapped that picture. And then, of course, <laughs> candids, lots of candids to and from the, the tea station. I rambled. Are there any questions? Do we get a demonstration? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great that you're willing to do this, Lindsay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have so much fun. I can go to Boston by myself. I mean, I you know, but I just I love going with students. They're so much fun. I love watching them learn how to navigate a city. It's a wonderful experience. Sounds like a great experience. Yeah. Are we looking for motion? motion. Yeah. I motion that we approve uh, the planned trip for the uh, Spanish club to Boston. I second it. Any discussion? All those in favor. Thank you. Get that fax going. <laughs> <clears throat> Acknowledge acceptance of grant. No, just take a, a brief moment. Did, did okay. you all get this included in your packet? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes when you have to cut things out of the budget in the previous year that you have good fortune and this happens to be one of those occasions as you all remember we were looking to approve a unified schools basketball program through the budget process last year and unfortunately that fell uh, by the wayside uh, but Mr. Frost, Mr. Clifford did apply for a grant through Special Olympics Maine and uh, as you can see we've been awarded that grant and we've accepted it so we've come here tonight to um, ask the board to acknowledge the acceptance of that grant and so you know the, the $2,500 will cover the cost of coach of travel of officials uh, and I believe we need to come up with maybe three or four hundred dollars out of the local budget which we can absorb uh, to make the program work I move that we acknowledge the acceptance of Special Olympics Maine incorporated grant as presented as I go. discussion is this just for basketball this is just for basketball. You know, okay. The season takes place at the after the conclusion of the regular basketball season, and students who play basketball are not eligible. But it's a it's a team composed of students identified with special needs, and other students. And there are rules about how much time each student can play and participate on in the game, and how many points each can score. But it's a competitive league. And I know in speaking with one of our um, athletic directors from another school last year, we talked about this during the budget process. It's really a fantastic opportunity for kids. Now, you heard Mr. Newitt talk earlier when the talent show comes about there are students that he sees in the school that he doesn't expect that he would hear anything from demonstrating some talents well, this is an opportunity for students that you may not expect something like that from who have a w world of opportunity and really have a, a great opportunity and a great time so I think this is a fantastic opportunity for Oswald High School so when you say league Dan you mean this of other schools in the area yeah, there's, there's actually a regular season and a tournament just like you have uh, with the basketball season that just started this past week All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Nomination and confirmation of new staff. Yes, and you heard uh, Rachel talk a little bit earlier that I would speak a little bit about this. Um, 
As Rachel mentioned in her report, um, with some unanticipated uh, grant carryover funds in Title I, um, we've got the opportunity to do some things that we wanted to do in the local budget. One of them is a math interventionist, which Rachel talked about. The other one is to use those funds to have um, an instructional coach, grades five through eight. Um, so we uh, advertised for that position, um, knowing that we had that if she was interested, had the background um, and experience to step into that position and really provide some benefit to our teachers. Um, so we're pleased to present tonight for your consideration a nomination of Deb Richards, who um, is a familiar face, as you know, she Deb teaches in the adult ed program, um, has been with us for a couple years now. Uh, she has 36 years experience in education, 25 of those years is teaching and uh, being a reading specialist. So this is a position that's right up her alley. She also has 10 years of administrative experience. Um, she's been an excellent uh, staff member since she's been here, and I'm pleased to nominate her to you for a uh, part-time instructional coach, 0.5 full-time equivalent, first year's probationary contract, and it's for the balance of this year. I make a motion to confirm the superintendent's nomination of Debbie Richards as a part-time instructional coach with a first year probationary contract. Second. Discussion? So this is going to be a permanent position, though, no, th right? This, no, j just, just like with, with the math interventionist, we have funds to support this for the balance of this school year. Okay. What we're hoping to demonstrate, and we're confident that we will, is that both of these positions are going to demonstrate the benefit by showing data, um, benefit to our students and our teachers. We would like to have them as positions permanently with local funding mm -hmm. in subsequent years. Okay. You've heard us talking about K through 8. With these positions, because of the grant fund, we can't use them grades 9 through 12. In an ideal world, we could make this a full-time position and have it expand K through 12. Okay. <coughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Great. Thank you. Welcome aboard again. Welcome. Calendar and announcements. School board meeting workshop to be announced. Well, I, I think uh, the, the reason we put to be announced on here was uh, we've had a reconfiguration of the board, and I know one of your tasks as the chair now is to uh, determine uh, committee membership. So that's why there's uh, to be announced on committee meetings. So we have policy that does have a list of policies that are going to need to be looked at. We also have personnel that is going to need to meet sooner rather than later because we have two of our organizations who are requesting initial meetings for collective bargaining, our teachers and ed techs. Um, and in terms of the school board workshop, I believe the next regularly scheduled workshop would be during school vacation week. And if I recall correctly at the last board meeting, you opted to have that the following week. Is that correct? To make it the day after New Year's. I wasn't certain. That's why I put it to be announced on there. Mm -hmm. What if we talk and we send an email? <laughs> is, that, is that okay we, we can, to do We can that? do that. Okay. Yep. Okay, um, and the same with the policy committee. Once we set committee groups up, well, once we know who the members are, you know, with people's right. varying schedules, there are some committees that can meet in the morning, some committees that can't. Yeah. yeah. So our next uh, regular school board meeting is Tuesday, January tenth, two thousand seventeen, City Hall, Council Chambers at six thirty p.m. And item L is adjournment. Having no further business, I move that we adjourn the board meeting. I second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. And that is 735. <laughs>